The first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet is Aleph. Aleph. The standard Hebrew script is called the square script, which means simply that each letter fits itself more or less into a square box like this. Now just like with English, Hebrew can be printed with many fonts, and the one that I'm using here called SBL Hebrew is a standard book font. But I'm going to teach you how to write each letter with a simple handwritten block script that doesn't include all the serifs and squigglies. Aleph is written with just three strokes, a diagonal and two shorter strokes. I'll diagram each letter for you like this, showing the order and direction of each stroke, but then I'll use the chalk to let you see the letter written like this. One, two, three. You might want to pause the video at this point and practice writing Aleph on your own a few times. Now let's turn our attention to the sound of the letter. There are actually two more or less silent consonants in Hebrew, and Aleph happens to be one of them. Instead of making its own sound, it just takes the sound of the vowel that follows it. Here are a couple Hebrew words that begin with the letter Aleph. Ani. Ani. Af. Af. And that's the letter Aleph. Next we have Bet. Bet. Bet is written with two strokes, one that curves around the right side, and then a base. Here's what it looks like with chalk. One, two. Notice that the base of the letter bet sticks out past the right side of the box. You'll want to pay attention to that because it'll help you distinguish bet from some other letters that have a similar shape. Bet is also one of the three letters in the Hebrew alphabet whose sound changes depending on whether or not it has a little dot in it. That little dot is called a dagesh. And if it's present in bait, then bait makes a hard b, b sound. But if there's no dagesh, it makes a soft v, v sound. Here are a couple examples. Bait, bait, and one with the soft bait, av, av, and that's bait. Next up, Gimel. Gimel. Gimel is one of a handful of letters that are narrower than the rest. They only use about half the box. And it's written with two strokes. One that wraps down like this, and then a foot coming off. Here's what it looks like to write it with chalk. One, two. Gimel makes the sound ge, ge, as in gibo, gibo, or gal, 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 gimel. That brings us to dalet, dalet. Dalet is simple to write. It just has a long cap at the top and then a vertical line down. Here's how you write it. One, two. Just like the letter bet, dalit also sticks out past the right side of the box, on the top this time. Again, notice that because there are a couple other letters that look a bit like dalit, and this will help you distinguish it from the rest. Dalit makes the sound de, de, as in dog. Dag, or devash, devash, dalet. Finally, in this lesson, we have the letter he. He. He is written with two strokes, one that wraps around the right side, and then a short upright that leaves a little gap at the top. Here it is written. One, two. He makes the breathy sound, he, he, as in hevel, hevel, or hechal, hechal, 
He is the letter Vav. Vav is one of the narrow letters of the Hebrew alphabet and is written with just two strokes, a short cap and then a vertical line. Here's what it looks like when written. Sometimes Vav stands in for a vowel in a word and signals an O or an U sound, but as a consonant, it makes a V sound. V. Actually, the name of the letter, Vav, is a word that means a hook or tent peg, and it's shaped a bit like the letter. Vav is also the conjunction and when attached to the front of another word. V. And that's the letter Vav. Next we have Zayin. Zayin. Zayin is also a narrow letter and is written with two strokes, an angled cap, and then another vertical line down. Here it is with chalk. One, two. Notice that the cap of Zayin extends out past the right side of the box. That'll help you distinguish it from other letters like for example, Vav. Zion makes the sound Z, Z, as in Zera, Zera, or Zevuv, Zvuv, Zion. Next we have the letter Chet, Chet. Chet is written with two strokes, one that wraps around the right side, and then a vertical that connects at the top. Here it is with the chalk. One, two. Chet looks a lot like the letter He, but the difference is Chet is closed at the top, whereas He has that gap. Chet makes the sound He, He. This can be a little tricky at first because it's not a sound that we use in the English language. It's made actually by constricting the airflow in the back of your throat. Kind of like when you say the word aha, aha. A bit of a rough H sound. Che, che. Here are a couple words that begin with the letter chet. Chamor, chamor. Chalav. Chalav. Chet. That brings us to Tet. Tet. Tet's a little bit of a funny letter for me. Uh, it looks a little different depending on what kind of font you're using. But here's how I like to write it. With a little hook and then a stroke that wraps around the bottom. Let's write it. One. Two. No matter what form you find tet in, it'll always have that hook on the right and then a bit of a gap at the top. Tet makes the sound te, te, as in tabach, tabach, or tal, tal, and that's tet. Finally, in this lesson, we have the letter. Yod. Yod. Yod is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet and only uses a corner of the box. You can write it with one little hooked stroke, just like this. Sometimes Yod stands in for a vowel in a word and makes an E sound, but as a consonant, Yod makes the sound Ye. Ye. As in Yayin, Yayin, or Yom, Yom, Yod. We have the letter Kaf, Kaf. Kaf is written by wrapping strokes around the top, right, and bottom of the box. Here it is with chalk. Wrap it right around like that. The shape of kaf is quite a bit like the letter bet, but if you remember from the first lesson, 
the base of Beit sticks out past its upright, whereas Kaf wraps around smoothly. Kaf is the first of five letters in the alphabet that have a final form, that is, their shape changes if they're the last letter of a word. Now the way you make a final form of the letter Kaf from the original is basically to take the base of the letter and rotate it down so that it extends below the bottom of the box. Now as you can see it doesn't look exactly like that, so here's how you'd write it with chalk, just two strokes over and down. This final form of the letter Kaf looks a lot like the letter Dalet and also like Resh, which is a letter we'll learn later. But again, the final form extends below the baseline. That's how you can tell it apart. Kaf is also one of the letters whose sound changes depending on whether or not it has the Dagesh. With the Dagesh, Kaf makes the sound Ke. Ke. But without the Dagesh, it makes a softer Che. Che. Now that sounds an awful lot like the letter Chet. And for all practical purposes, we can say it's the same sound. Remember, it's made by giving a little friction in the back of the throat. Che. Che. Here are a couple words that start with the letter Kaf. Kelev. Kelev. Kise. Kise. And that's the letter Kaf. Next up is Lamed. Lamed. Lamed's written with three strokes starting above the box. One, two, and wrap around down to the middle. Here it is with chalk. One, two, and three. Lamed is the only letter that extends above the top of the box. And it makes the sound le, le. To me, Lamed looks a bit like a lightning bolt, and that helps me remember the sound le. Here are a couple examples. Lechem, lechem. Lev, lev. Lamed. That brings us to mem, mem. Here's how I like to write mem. One stroke up, wrap around, and then write that little hook at the top. One, two, three. Just remember to leave a bit of a gap at the bottom of the letter. Mem is the second of our letters that has a final form and it's made essentially by closing that gap at the bottom. But as you can see, it's not exactly the same. You can write it by more or less drawing a square box. And this is the final form of mem. Mem makes the sound meh, meh, as in Mid ba, mid ba. Mayim, mayim. Mem. Finally, nun, nun. Nun is one of the narrow letters and is written with three strokes. One, two, and three. Let's write that with the chalk. Nun also has a final form and it's created in the standard way by bending the base of the letter down below the bottom of the box. The final form of Nun looks a lot like the letter Vav, but again remember that it sticks down below the baseline. Nun makes the sound ne, 
ne. As in, nachal, nachal, and nachash, nachash, nun. Samech, samech. Samech's written with a flat top and then a stroke that loops around the bottom. Let's write it together. One, two. Samech looks a lot like the letter tet, but remember that tet has an opening at the top. It also looks a bit like the final form of the letter mem, but mem is boxy at the bottom, whereas samech is rounded. Samech makes the sound se, se, as in sus, sus, sefer, sefer, samech. Next we have ayin, ayin. You can write ayin with two strokes, one that wraps around to the bottom, and then a second one that meets it in the middle, like this. One, two. Notice that ayin does extend a little bit down past the bass line. It's also the second of our consonants that doesn't have a sound of its own. It just takes the sound of the vowel that follows it. As in, it's, it's, or ir, ir, ayin. Now on to pe, pe. Pe is written with three strokes, one that wraps around the right side, a bass, and then a hook at the top. Let's write it with chalk. One, two, and then that hook. Three. Pe is one of the letters that does have a final form as well, and it's created in the standard way by pivoting the bass down below the bottom of the box. Pe is also one of the letters whose sound changes depending on whether or not it has a dagesh. With the dagesh, pe makes the sound pe, pe. But without it, it makes the soft sound fe, fe. Here are a couple examples from pe. Panim, panim. Para, para. Hey. And now we have tsadi. Tsadi. You can write tsadi with three strokes a diagonal, a base, and then the third stroke that stops in the middle. One, two, and three. Now, when I was first learning Hebrew, I got Sadi mixed up with the letter Ayn quite a bit because, to my eye, they both look like the letter Y in English. But you'll have them distinguished in no time. Sadi is also the last of the letters that has a final form, and you might be expecting by now that it's made by pivoting the base of the letter down past the bottom of the box. And that would be almost right. Actually, the final form of tsadi looks like this. And you can write it simply with a vertical line and then a second stroke that meets it in the middle. But it does extend below the bass line. Tsadi makes the sound tse, tse, which is a sound that we don't have with just one letter in the English language. But it's the kind of sound that we hear when we use the word it's. Tse. Tse. As in, tson. Tson. Or, tsipo. 
tsipo. Tsari. Letter. Kof. Kof. Kof's written with two strokes. One that wraps around and then a vertical that extends below the bottom of the box. Let's write it together. One, two. Kof does extend below the bass line, and it makes the sound ke, ke. Here are a couple examples. Kaiits, kaiits, kever, kever, kof. Next is the letter reish, reish. You can write reish with one stroke that wraps around the right side. Let's try that with the chalk. Reish looks a lot like the letter Dalit, but remember, Reish has a rounded corner, whereas Dalit has that uh, sharp corner. Now the sound of the letter Reish is something like the English letter R, Re, Re, but that doesn't sound very much like how a native speaker would pronounce it. And the way that I've taught myself to pronounce it as best I can like a native speaker is to start with the English sound of W, we, we, wesh. And what I do is visualize that sound starting not with my lips, but further and further back in my throat. We, re, re, re. Almost like I'm swallowing the sound until it's back where the uvula hangs down in the back of your throat. Re, re. As in, Roche, Roche, or Roe, Roe, Reich. Next we have the letter Sheen, Sheen. You can write Sheen with just two strokes, one that loops around the bottom, and then get that middle spike and attach it just to the left of center. Here it is with chalk. One, two. Now you'll notice at the top that Sheen has two letters with dots above them. That's because it makes two different sounds depending on where that dot is. If the dot is over the left spike, then Sheen makes the se sound. And you actually call the name of the letter seen. Se, se. But if that dot is over the right spike, then it's just your general sheen and makes the sound she, she. Here are a couple examples. With the seen, sade, sade. And with sheen, shamaim, shamaim. Sheen. And finally, Tav. Tav. Tav's written with three strokes. That one that wraps around the right side, then a vertical line, and finally a little foot. Here's how you write it with the chalk. One, two, and three. Tav looks a lot like the letter Chet but it will always have that foot on the lower left, whereas chet is straight at the bottom. Tav makes the sound te, te, just like the letter tet. As in, talmid, talmid, or tefila, tefila, tav. Congratulations on making it all the way to the end, and for sticking with us, we have a bonus, Shir Ha'alaf Bet, the Alaf Bet song. Let me teach it to you. Ha 
Ale fet, gimel dalet, hevav zain, chetet, yod, kaf, lamed, mem nun, samech, ayin, pe, tzadi, kof, resh, sin, shin, ta. Let's try it again. Ale fet, Gimel Dalet Hevav Zayin Chetet Yod Kaf Lamed Mem Nun Samech Ayin Pe Tzadi Kof Resh Sin Shin Ta Shalom Ze Ivrit Baluach Nekudot Shalom, hello. This is a supplement to the Blackboard Hebrew lessons on the Hebrew alphabet, this time looking at the Hebrew vowel pointing system. I'll introduce you to each of the vowels, and then we'll have a game to play that will give you some practice with them. By the way, for this video, I'll be using an academic style pronunciation like you'd find in a seminary or graduate school outside of Israel. Native speakers use a slightly simplified vowel system, so don't be thrown off by that. Okay, let's dive in. So this is our friend, the letter Dalet. She's here to give us a spatial reference for these vowels. Now all of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet are actually consonants. For the longest time, ancient Hebrew speakers didn't write down their vowels at all, but just knew that particular clusters of consonants formed particular words that had associated vowel sounds. About the 7th century CE, Jewish scribes wanted to preserve the vowel sounds within their written texts. But since the texts we're talking about were sacred, they didn't want to disturb the consonantal form. Instead, they developed a system of dots and dashes that they could put around and inside the letters, primarily underneath, to indicate which sound followed that consonant. The form of these dots that is stuck comes to us from the Masoretic scribes. So let me introduce you to each of these marks. First we have the kamats. Kamats. Kamats is a little T-looking symbol which makes an ah sound, as in father. I think of the shape of the kamatsa as looking a little bit like a necktie, uh, kind of like the type that my father might wear. That helps me remember it. Kamats. Next is patach. Patach. Patach also makes an ah sound, as in father although it's a shorter ah, technically. And so I think of it as kind of like that necktie with the tie part snipped off. So it's a shorter ah, patach. Next we have tzere, tzere. Tzere makes a long a sound, as in hooray, hooray for tzere. Then we have segol, segol. Segol makes a short eh sound, eh, as in egg. And I think of segol as like a little cluster of eggs. Eh, segol. Next we have hirek, hirek. Hirek by itself makes a short i eh sound, as in dish, i. Eh. And I think of that little dot, like the dot on a short letter I in English. And that helps remember I for hirik. Now sometimes hirik is followed by a yod. And in that case, it changes its sound from a short I to a long E sound. And we call this a hirik yod. E. E. As in beat. Then we have cholam, cholam. Cholam is a dot above a letter and a little to its left. It makes an O sound, as in boat. Often you will find a cholam atop the letter vav, and so we call this a cholam vav, but it makes an O sound, cholam. Then we have shurek. Shurek. 
Shurech looks like a vav with a dagesh in it, but it's actually a vowel of its own, and it makes an oo sound. Oo, as in scoop, scoop. Oo. Then there's kibbutz, kibbutz. The kibbutz is a diagonal line of three dots that makes a short oo sound or an u, uh, as in book, u, uh. kibbutz. Then there are a handful of shorter or reduced vowels that come up from time to time, and I just want to introduce you to them here. This one, the kamatz chatuf, is like a half kamatz. And uh, it looks just like the regular kamatz, except you'll find it in a closed, unaccented syllable. Don't worry about all that for now. I just want you to know that this exists, and that it makes a shorter ah sound, as in la. But for now, when you come across this sign, start out by assuming that it's probably a regular kamatz making a long ah sound. But just know that this shorter form exists. Likewise, this is the shva, and it has a number of rules associated with it that deserve a whole lesson of their own. So we're not really going to talk about that this time, but know that that's out there. Then there are three more reduced vowels that each start with a shva and then have either a kamatz, a patach, or a segol following it. And they make a reduced sound of the vowel that's with them. So the first one, the kataf kamatz, makes a reduced kamat sound, or an ah, and then the others, which are already short to start with, just make more or less the same sound that they would with the vowel by itself. So ah and eh. We're not going to spend a lot of time on those. You'll get to know them as you encounter them in the text. So here's a chart with the primary vowels in it. I wanted to show this to you just so you can see that there are five general vowel types, like there are in most languages, a, e, i, o, and u. And in Hebrew, for each one, there is at least one long and one short form of that vowel. A and a, e and e, i and i, o and a, U and U. Okay, now that we've had a little bit of an introduction to these vowels, here's where you'll actually learn how to use them. We'll play a little game, and in this game I'll show you two syllables and I'll pronounce one. Then I'll give you five seconds countdown to decide which one you think is the accurate syllable. Put your attention on that one and the other one will disappear. Uh, so here's what it's like. Ba. Ba. Which one is ba? Focus on that one. And the other one will disappear. There it is. Ba. Okay, you should have the idea. Here's the next one. Do. Do. There it is. Do. Next. Hi. 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 Lev. 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 So. So. So, pay, 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 zig, 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 me. 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 
חל, חל. חל. All right, how are you doing? This is going to get a little trickier now. You ready? Melech. Melech. Yes, Melech. Shama. 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 Ish. Ish. Zachar. 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 Hena. 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 Ben. 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 Root. Root. Yes, Root. All right, so there we have it. The primary vowels of the Hebrew vowel pointing system and some practice with that. Feel free to go back and try that game again and see if you can get yourself a better score. After a while, these will all become second nature. So just give yourself some grace and some time with it. And in the meantime, love your Hebrew.